Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer for you alone are the holy one you alone are the lord you alone are the most high jesus christ with the holy spirit in the glory of god the father amen the lord be with you, and also with you. let us pray let your continual mercy o lord cleanse and defend your church because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill the whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, say to the whole congregation of Israelites, draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness and the glory of God appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was Moses said to them. It is bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will re read Psalm 78, verses 23 through 39, responsibly by full verse. So he commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down upon them to eat and gave them grain from heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. He provided for them food enough. For he caused the east wind to blow in the heavens and let out the south wind by his might. He rained down flesh from them like dust and winged birds like the sea like the sand of the sea. He let it fall in the midst of their camp and round their dwellers. So they ate and were well filled, for he gave them what they craved. A reading from Ephesians. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a worthy life of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness with patience, hearing with, with one another in love, 
making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but, the, but that he had also ascended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the one who ascended far above all heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some past pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown, blown about every wind of doctrine by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The next day, when the people who remained after the feeding of the 5,000 saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, what, what must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Go ahead and take a seat. Whenever I preach, I'm really hungry. Do you ever get really, really hungry as soon as you sit down to work? 
Yeah, yeah. And it's like, why didn't I bring that granola bar with me? That would have been really nice. <laughs> Does anyone have any food? Like an apple? No? Okay. So there was this one time when I was hungry in Japan. Helene and I were on a bike, with, bike trip with two friends in like the back, 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 backwoods of Japan. We, we chose to go there. We're like, let's just go on a bike trip in like the middle of nowhere and it'll be great. So we thought, hey, let's bring all this food with us. And our friends thought, we won't need food. We'll be fine. We'll just rough it. So um, now in the back, 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 back woods of Japan, there are not convenience stores or supermarkets. There's farmers, and they eat their food that they eat, that they grow. So, you know, we ate our food, and then our friends ate our food, and then they ate all of our food. And, and we said, well, we don't have any food anymore. What are we going to do? So um, we're wandering around in the hopes of finding a larger town, and in the wee hours of the evening, I guess. Can evening be wee hours? Anyway, late, late, late in the evening, we came to a tiny little hotel. We begged food from them. We also didn't have much money, but we begged food from them. And the only thing they could offer us, God bless you, was rice and pickles. Now, some people tell me that Japanese pickles are different than Western pickles. They are not. Gwendolyn, do I like pickles? Thank you, Fiona. One day I will tell you the dreaded story of Pickle Day. It is a woeful story that when I told my mom I was going to preach about pickles, she said, are you going to tell them about Pickle Day too? Pickle Day is a long story, and Helene has told me that I can't preach it or talk about it in her presence because she's known it and heard it too long. So I won't tell you about Pickle Days, but I just want, you to, I just want to say, you know, eating pickles, eating a food that you hate when you're starving is awful. It's horrible. It's a wretched, wretched thing. It does not make a happy father to him. But the opposite happened to me too. While I was in Japan, my parents wanted to come visit me and see me, but they thought going to Japan on the other side of the world was too far. So we said, let's just meet in Hawaii halfway through. So I took a plane to Hawaii, got there a couple hours before my parents, so I was kind of wandering around Honolulu trying to find something to eat. And at that time, the only thing that was open was a TGI Fridays that served breakfast. I didn't know they did this, but they do, at least in Honolulu. So at this point, I had been in Japan for about a, a year and a half now. You know, not even a morsel of Western food had passed my lips. And I love Japanese food, but American breakfasts are different. And if you've ever traveled abroad, there's that one thing that you really, really want that you cannot get. This was American breakfasts for me. And that American breakfast, breakfasts are kind of like home. And here in Hawaii, home was put right in front of me on the table. Crispy bacon, egg, this is why I'm hungry all the time. Eggs that were like perfectly made, sunny side up, so that like the, the, the white part was hard and the yellow part was runny. Toast with butter on it and orange juice, a tall glass of orange juice. My stomach was like, food, cool, okay, great, I'm hungry. But my heart, my heart hungered for this food. I had longed for this food for 15 long months, and I didn't even know that until I looked at this plate and thought, I want to eat everything, even the plate. So I started eating, and I started crying. And the waitress comes up to give me some orange juice, and she says, oh, dear, are you all right? And she was speaking English. I was like, oh, she speaks my language. She said, dear, are you all right? Are you okay? And I was, you know, mouthful of food. I just said, I'm just so happy. <laughs> Unfortunately, Helene wasn't there, so she can't corroborate this story, but it's true. <laughs> have you ever been hungry like that? And maybe more importantly, have you ever fed someone who was hungry like that? Have you ever given someone a piece of bread and seen in their eyes that no matter how much you feed their stomachs, their hearts will still remain empty? God bless you. I remember feeling people while teaching. I was teaching Asian American literature, and if I've told you about what I've studied, I study medieval literature, but they said, oh, you've been to Japan, here, teach Asian American literature, and I'm like, Amy Tan, that's all I know. But they, they teach it anyway. I remember filling my students' hearts in a way that was a mystery to me. Once I was teaching this short story about trees, it was a magnificent story, 
And I was trying to explain what was so magnificent. I was tripping over my words. I didn't have the right vocabulary. I just couldn't explain it. But there was this girl in the third row, and her eyes lit up. I don't think her eyes lit up because she figured out what the story meant or because she had realized that she was always hungry or something, but because she had realized that here was food and here was something that she had only glimpsed, and her eyes went wide with it. And I think I made her hungry for a long time for something, and I hope that I made her search for it. She came up to me after class and tried to babble out what she thought the story meant, and I, I'm pretty sure she spent a long time after that thinking, maybe praying, maybe reading the story over again because she had found a hunger that was at the heart of who she was. And what about the sacraments? What about the Eucharist? I mean, you all used to make bread here, right? We used to do bread instead of wafers. And, and that fills you up in and of itself, right? Going and baking bread and kneading it. It feels like God is kneading something into your heart when you're baking bread. And then when you feed people, it feels even more like that. And there's something wonderful about opening a door in a house and the smell of bread just coming in and wafting over you. It kind of makes you weak in the knees because it makes you hungry so much. And I've got this recipe from Swanee that's going to knock your socks off. I used to have kids come up to the sacristy and say, please, please, can we have more of that wonderful bread? And having kids come up and beg more of the Eucharist from you, and you give it out, like, because, I mean, I got this huge loaf, and here, just take whatever you want, and they run away giggling and laughing and shoving it in their faces. That's one of the greatest things in the entire world. And I was talking to Connor Ball the other day, and he said, I don't remember whose he was talking about. He mentioned the name, but he said, oh, Father Tim, this one person makes this bread, and it's so delicious. It's the best. It's wonderful. I just want to eat it all. For now, though, we're sticking with wafers, but that's cool. That's bread, too. It's small and flat and kind of weird sometimes, but oh, how small and how flat and how mysterious this is. Do you remember the first time after COVID restrictions that you had the Eucharist? When the priest or me, Pastor Rick, or somebody else put that little wafer that's bread but also not bread into your hands. And do you remember how much you missed it? I did. I remember that. How you had been made, waiting for that moment, waiting for long days and weeks and months and an entire year to taste the Eucharist again. Or maybe how God put it into your heart at that single moment, like a young boy a thousand miles from home who, who was tasting ba- bacon and eggs and sobbing like a baby because it was just so good. Did God's presence strike you in the heart? because you had been longing for this thing and you didn't even know it. Or maybe it's been a gradual thing. And every time you've come up, these, come up to these steps and I juggle the ch- tongs and try to find a way to grab just one and can't, and then put it into your hands. And each time it gets heavier and heavier because you're born more fully into that life that is the Eucharist. That life and and that moment and that experience where you find that yet again you've been brought to salvation and the footsteps of he- the foot <laughs> the footsteps of heaven yeah the footsteps of heaven Jesus's footsteps have you ever been fed like that have you ever have you ever brought food to a place where there was nothing have you ever looked into someone's eyes and seen nothing not because they're evil or something like that but because they have starved for so long and for too long that they can't even hope for anything anymore. Have you ever been to that place? Have you ever been in that place? Or have you ever been that place? May God bless you if you are, because it's a horrible place to be, where you feel that there is nothing, and there's nothing inside and there's nothing outside. And this is the pastoral part. If you do feel that way, whether you're online or whether you're here, the church is here for you to help, not to give you something, a quick fix, not to pat you on the back and say, it'll be all right, but to help you realize where your hunger really is and to help you rediscover life again. If that's a definition of, the, of the, what the church is, then that's a pretty good one.
You know, it's hard to talk about hunger when there's people who are really hungry outside our doors. It's hard to talk about our spiritual hunger, our emotional hunger, and our intellectual hunger when people are hungering in their tummies and in their stomachs. Sorry, I'm a father. I say tummies. But we need to think about both because they're connected. Our hunger and the hunger of the world are sometimes the same thing, and often they're the same thing because they're both leading us to one another. We have so much, and we're still starving. Some people have nothing, and they don't know that they're starving. These are horrible and terrible and awful questions that we need to address in our own hearts, but not to forget our own hearts and the hearts of those sitting next to us who are hungry for emotional food, intellectual food, spiritual food. How do we give that to people? How do we allow ourselves to accept that? How do we allow something that, to enter into us where we feel there's nothing to catch it and to trust that it will fill us completely? And as a friend of mine says, wowzers, that's a lot of questions, right? Those are questions for the philosophers, not for me. No, this is a question for you. These are questions for the person sitting next to you and for me as well as your priest. It's something to ponder for the vestry and for the altar guild, for everyone who goes to help at the Samaritan Center and for the guys running the cameras up there. It's for you sitting at home in front of a computer, whether you're really nice and happy and you're joyful and you got a cup of coffee, or whether you turned on the compu computer and said, this may be the last thing I ever do. There's this awful, awful, horribly sad story. In, this is not in the script, I'll just tell it. Um, in, in Japanese literature, where a man who was depressed, his mother had been driven insane, um, people had died all around him, and he wrote in his book, I can't take it anymore, and then he ended it all. And we have that last moment. How terrifying. That's why we need to be thinking about these questions, because people are hungry in ways we can't even imagine, or maybe we can imagine them, and we know that terror. And that is why we come here to church. I mean, you know, it's also really pretty here, and I love all of you, and you're all great, but we come here to be reminded and to remember how much people need to be fed. And we come up to these steps and up to the altar, and I make all these pretty hand motions and whatnot because people are hungry and because we have found that there is something that feeds that and can feed that in a place where eternally, for all eternity, forever, people are fed and full and happy. That's why we're here. So as we receive this little tiny piece of wafer, as we go out the doors, remember your own hunger. Remember that it is an honorable thing to seek to fill it. Remember the hunger of the person sitting next to you, even if it doesn't seem like they're hungry at all and their stomach's not growling. Their heart might be growling. It is an honorable thing and a good thing to try to feed that. And remember those who are in the depths of despair, for they need our help. Jesus is calling us, pulling us, grabbing us by the hands and retching us out to feed them and to give them hope in tiny little ways and in huge ways. And God bless you for those who do that work day in and day out. Because I know a lot of you here do that. And you don't worry about the tiredness. And you don't worry about the exhaustion. God bless you for that. God sees your work. God sees your love. And God blesses you in many, many ways. God bless you all. Standing as you are able, let's affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, 
by the power of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any other kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Dee Dee, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For the special needs and congregation, for special needs and concerns of this congregation, hear us, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O oh King. We pray for all who have died that they may have peace in their, your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We will now pray for the church, for Michael, our presiding bishop, Dee Dee, our bishop, Tim, our rector, and the people of St. Joseph's Episcopal Chapel in Marathon, and their priest, the Reverend Thomas Margrave. For those with long-term needs, Maria, Moira, Laura, Lynn, Kristen, John, Pat, Brian, Hannah, Alina, Herbert, and Steve. For those who are in need of God's healing presence, Sandy, Carlton, Trish, Koa, Jerry, Lynn, Charlotte, Lisa, David, Bill, Robert, Paul, Allison, Mac, Mary, Jack, Jackie, Carl, Greg, Emily, Mary, and Victoria. We give thanks for those celebrating a birthday this week Kathy Byron, Eileen Emerson, 
Sean Hebert, Melissa Spicer, Gilly Davies, and Sandy Hessler. For those celebrating an anniversary this week, Christine Zapia and Zach Schuster, Renee and Ron Hebert, Alyssa and Travis Newton. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Most merciful Father, in your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Please stand. The peace of Christ be always with you. Go ahead and take a seat. I'd like to ask your prayers, especially for, um, I, it was a long one, so I didn't want to just stuff it in, but my um, cousin Casey lost their son this week. Um, it was a great tragedy, so please keep Casey and the Hannon family in your prayers. Um, a lot of phone calls and a lot of um, kneeling down. So, The Lord sometimes is... Um, acts in very mysterious ways, and it is bringing the family closer together, I believe. Um, and that is not the reason why this person died, but it is something that the Lord is doing through it. So um, God is very close to us right now, and we love your prayers. Thank you. It's a hard thing to start the announcements with, right? Well, are there any announcements? Rini, do you want to say anything about your glorious, or are you exhausted? Are you asleep? <laughs> Oh, okay, great. <laughs> it's still going well. <laughs> but this coming Sunday will be our special worship at Mill, Mill Run Park. And it will be at a different time. It will be at 10. So those people who would like to come, I really need to know if you would just respond in some way to me, and because I get the shot, and I need to know how many people are there to eat, so <laughs> I don't want to have too few pieces of whatever. So the, I think the information is actually in your bulletin, but if you would somehow respond to me, I've gotten very few responses, and yet people have said to me, oh, we're coming, <laughs> but I, I need it in writing. And the other thing is, if there are people who would be coming and it would be difficult to walk to the back of the park where our main event will be, we will have a car uh, service to take people back. We cannot have cars go into the park technically, but I have been given a key so that I can unlock the gate for one or two cars to transport people. So you don't need to let me know that ahead of time, except um, we will have cars ready probably about a quarter of to start transferring people back. If you have any questions, I'll be around. Thank you. And just in case people online didn't get that, that's um, next week we'll be in uh, Mill Run Park at 10 o'clock. Um, please tell Rini if you're going to come. There will be food, yummy, yummy food. It's near a playground, so you'll see me go down a slide. And Gwendolyn. <laughs> and Fiona. Um, 
if it is rainy, if it's just like pouring and miserable out, I'll be sending an email out to you and try to get in touch with you in any way possible. Um, and we'll just be back here at nine o'clock as usual. But I should know that by Thursday. Um, but you all know how fickle the weather is here. So um, we may be out there and it's pouring. We may be in here and it's bright and sunny, but I'll tell you all. Thank you for being um, flexible on that one. Any other announcements? Yes, Peter. from yesterday, uh, Saturday, August 14th, is our next visit to the Sinern Center. And um, we need roughly uh, 13 people to prepare and serve the meal. And um, we'll be doing what Father Tim talked about in the sermon in a very basic way. But I think um, the Sinern Center does a wonderful job of not only being people's stomachs but their souls because they're there every day uh, serving meals and this is our chance to contribute to that service. Uh, so, so far I have three people who volunteer. Uh, I need about ten more. Uh, so anybody that's able and interested, let me know either after the service or by email. Yeah, go ahead. We are still collecting non perishable food items for interfaith works until the end of September, and then we'll get going with our own food pantries here at FM. So, any non perishable food you could bring in each week, that would be very helpful. Thank you. One of the um, ways that they told us to. to um, remember this, is don't go to the supermarket thinking, oh, I'll just pick up a few other things and, and go. Think, what do people need a lot of? You know, peanut butter, beans, stuff, rice, stuff like that. And specifically think of those things. Put them on your list. Then when you go, you'll remember when you hit those aisles. Um, that's a good way to remember. Or write it on your hand, because hands are good too. Um, starting the 8th, which is next week, and going into the 17th, I, um, Helena and I will be down in New Jersey visiting family and celebrating um, a baby shower. Not a baby shower, a wedding shower. That's what we're doing, right? That's what you're doing. Um, so we won't be here, but if you have a pastoral emergency, um, if you really need to talk to someone, if you're in the hospital, call the wardens. We have someone on call who can come and visit with you. Um, and if it's really serious, I'm not that far away. I'll just drive up. Um, it's a nice ride. Is there anything else? Any other announcements? Huzzah. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an honoring and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, God, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus Christ, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, almighty God, we who have been redeemed by Jesus and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night our Savior Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now Christ's work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate Christ's death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Holy God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob, Leah, and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in Christ's name. Accept these prayers and praises, Almighty God, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit your church gives honor, glory, and worship for generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. May God bless you now and always. May God bless you now and always. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Savior, amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. <laughs>